What is up guys, Lou here again for Techno Loco and today is the start of another week in the world of tech. Last week was CES 2017. CES stands for the Consumer Electronic Show. It's basically this crazy time with technology companies go out to Las Vegas, show us the best that they've got and what they have planned for the future. Now this year wasn't that much different from all other years. There was a lot of crazy tech, some laughable tech, and some utterly ridiculous tech. What we're going to be talking about today is just a couple of smartphones though that really stood out during the show. These smartphones that I've got here are from like a bunch of different companies. Every year, mobile phone companies, smartphone companies go to CES to showcase the latest and greatest that they have. Sometimes they launch new phones there, sometimes they just they make announcements regarding its availability, but nonetheless they do show up. And this year, a couple interesting names stood out. All right, so let's go. First, the Revivalists. This year at CES, someone showed up at CES and they haven't really been there for the last couple of years. I'm talking about BlackBerry. The company was basically bankrupted and they declared bankruptcy and they stopped selling phones altogether. But all their assets were bought out by a company called TCL Communications. And actually, in fact, last year they released a couple of phones and the most interesting one was the blackberry priv this year though they wanted to showcase a little bit something more interesting and that's in the form of what people are calling the blackberry mercury to be clear the phone is not going to be called the blackberry mercury that's just a name that the internet slapped onto this prototype device however tcl did show up with the blackberry mercury in tow and it looks amazing it's a combination of an Android aesthetic, like it looks like a four inch screen, capacitive touchscreen, plus the signature BlackBerry QWERTY keyboard. And it, I gotta say, it looks interesting. Not particularly sleek or, or, or mind blowing, but definitely looks like something BlackBerry users would love and use. We don't know the screen size, we don't know what powers it, we don't know how much battery it runs. We don't know a whole lot about that device. What we do know, however, is that it will have a physical keyboard and that that physical keyboard will have some capacitive functions. As in like you can swipe left and right and up and down on it and on the keyboard itself and it will navigate through the menus and selection screens or whatever. Pretty cool, I would say. And in fact, it also has a fingerprint scanner built in to the space bar of the keyboard itself. So I think that's pretty cool. This shows some very innovative thinking on TCL's part. So I think that's very interesting. And uh, what TCL is saying is that this phone will be a bit more uh, enterprise focused rather than consumer focused because they wanted to get back into the hands of people that really require that end-to-end -end security for their communications. However, don't fret if you want a consumer friendly BlackBerry phone, one will be coming, but that's gonna be all the way out in 2018. Hopefully it comes sooner rather than later, but what are you gonna do? Next revivalist here is the Nokia brand. That's right. What happened was Nokia got bought out by a company called HMD Global. They're a Finnish company. This January, CES, they announced or reaffirmed the announcement that they are going to be making something called the Nokia 6. It's going to be a 5.5 inch full HD display. It's going to run Android 7 out of the box and it's going to have a 16 megapixel rear camera and an 8 megapixel front camera. So I guess pretty mid range so far. And the rest of the specs are just as mid-range. It's going to be using a Snapdragon 430, very low power consumption chip, but not particularly strong performance either. Um, just a right balance there. But it does have 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. So that's like ticking off all the right boxes. I would say it's it's a pretty interesting compromise. It's also going to have an aluminum unibody. The other important thing that HMD Global announced during this event though is that the Nokia 6 is going to be exclusive to China first. It's a very strategic market to have and I agree. If it succeeds in China, it's going to succeed everywhere else in the world. So better to see and check the reception there. Um, whether it's going to be a welcome phone there or not. The price point they're saying it's going to be at is about $240. So that's a pretty good price point to have. And um, I think all of those specs plus the sleek looking unibody, I think that's going to be a real winner over there. 
Uh, hopefully, it gets released to the rest of the world sooner rather than later. Next revivalist on the chopping block is the Kodak brand. This one is called the Kodak Ektra, and this is a smartphone designed with photography in mind. Now, I mean, like, looking at it, it actually does look like a vintage camera. Spec-wise though, it still does run Android, Android uh, Marshmallow 6.0. It has a 5-inch screen, 2.3 gigahertz uh, processor, 3 gigs of RAM, plus 32 gigabytes of storage, and a 3000 milliamp battery. So all that is pretty much, you know, run of the mill for the mid-range of the smartphone world. It does, however, shine in the camera department. It has a 21 megapixel rear-facing camera, so pretty high resolution with an f2 aperture. Now that's a little bit more exciting because an f2 aperture means good performance in low light. We haven't really seen any reviews come out for the Kodak Ektra yet, but with these specs alone, it, it should be a decent shooter. Basically, the, the whole focus here is that it's just, it's, it's a camera designed for taking pictures. It comes with a specialized version of the camera app and has all the settings manual settings and the interface looks more like a DSLR. That's pretty interesting. Will it sell? I'm not absolutely certain. The rest of the specs don't really speak well of it, but the design does look good and it does have Kodak's like, you know, eye for good photography for it. So maybe it might sell to a certain crowd. It's basically still a gamble at this point. We haven't really seen any outputs. We haven't seen any samples or anything. So it's up in the air. Now for a look at the more current phones, and Asus had a big presence there because they wanted to release two phones. One of them is the Zenfone AR, and it's just this crazy futuristic phone. It runs some of the most high-end bits of technology software-wise and hardware-wise, and it's the first smartphone to ever pack eight gigabytes of RAM. You heard that right. 8 gigabytes of RAM for a smartphone. I don't know about you, but that might be a little bit overkill. Though, it does support two things that do need a lot of RAM. One is called Daydream VR, and one is Tango Augmented Reality. Now, both of these are technologies coming from Google, and let me just explain real quick before we delve into the Zenfone AR. Daydream VR is basically a standard that Google built for smartphones so that you can use them in virtual reality situations uh, very well. So that means what kind of RAM it uses, how much RAM it has, the processors, the software architecture, all that is built around Daydream VR. And this is one of the very first phones to support Daydream VR, but it also has something called Tango AR, which stands for Augmented Reality. Now, if you've ever played Pokemon Go, you already know what Augmented Reality is. When you turn on your smartphone camera, when you're catching a Pokemon and you can see the Pokemon in the surroundings, that's AR, that's Augmented Reality. It's basically overlaying elements of the game or the, the, the app you're using into the real life. Okay, so Tango AR isn't just about, you know, using your camera to show you the surroundings and then overlaying stuff over that. It's actually a whole array of different sensors and software so that this phone knows how it relates to the rest of the space. The Tango AR system utilizes depth sensing cameras and motion cameras and additional cameras just to get all the data it can so that it understands where in the space of where it is, where the phone is. Okay, let's talk about the Zen Phone AR. It feels like it's gonna be a top of the line phone for Zen Phone, for Asus, and it sports a 5.7 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display. It runs, again, either six gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM, depending on the capacities you choose. All this to say basically is that it's gonna be a very, very fast phone. It's a pretty safe bet to say they're gonna have 3264 and 128 gigabyte configurations. Packs also a 23 megapixel camera on the back. As you can see in the pictures, it does look pretty sleek. It's gonna have a metal frame that goes all around the front and uh, sides of the phone, and it's gonna have this nice looking leather textured back. And I think that's a pretty interesting look. Um, there's not gonna be a, fingerprint sensor in the back because the Tango AR array is going to be there. So it's going to have a fingerprint sensor on the front instead. It's going to be released the second quarter of 2017. No confirmed pricing yet or availability or where it's going to be available for purchase. 
Uh, you can bet though it's going to be somewhere up in the $800 range. The next one we're going to be talking about though is still from Asus and it's the Zenfone 3 Zoom. Now I don't want to talk about a lot about the Asus Zenfone 3 Zoom just because it basically looks like an iPhone 7 Plus. Very similar lines, very similar body shape, very similar layout of the cameras and everything. It just basically looks up like the 7 Plus. It has a very interesting internals combination though. It packs a 5.5 inch screen, full HD AMOLED display. It packs a Snapdragon 625 and what looks like maybe three gigabytes, uh, three gigabytes of RAM, but also a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Now, I don't know about you and how you use your phones, but that's a lot of battery and that's definitely a thumbs up for me. It doesn't look like it made the phone any much bigger though. It looks like a decent size. It looks good to hold in the hand. So it looks pretty sleek. There's also a fingerprint reader and that's gonna be on the back. Also, it runs Android 6.0 out of the box. The two cameras on the back, both are 12 megapixels each and the zoom lens on that, it, so it does have an optical zoom. The zoom lens is a 2.3x optical zoom at an aperture of f1.7. So the f1.7 aperture is actually pretty good for low light photography and you know, I, I've seen samples from Asus uh, Zen phones in the past and they look pretty good. So I, I don't think it's going to be lacking in that department. Um, the front camera though is also an interesting thing. It does pack a 13 megapixel sensor at an aperture of f2.0. So I think that's also a pretty good selfie cam. So that's slated for a release in February. There's no sure announcement yet on pricing or availability. So, you know. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, that's all the smartphones we have. I mean, that's all the notable smartphones that I really cared about during the CES. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to feel about it. Nokia is making a comeback. Blackberry is making a comeback. Kodak is also trying to make an entry into the smartphone world. So I don't know. What do you think? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, how do you feel about all these old brands trying to make a comeback? Do you think it's going to be worth it? Do you think they're just going to crash and burn again? So let me know in the comment section down below. Um, and I think that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. This has been The Daily Dose. And uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in. As always, this has been Lou. You guys stay awesome. You guys stay safe. And until next time, peace.